Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Huizo. My name is Gabriel. I'm Rinda. Um, I'm Riley Means. My name is Alex. I'm Dana Iliuchuk. My name is Constanza Rivano. The summers are getting hotter and the winters are getting harder. Uh, the air pollution is getting worse and worse. For example, last summer was really hot in the Netherlands. Pretty bad, I think. Worrying. Risky. Uh, it's pretty devastating, you think? Over exploitation. Because I think we are just taking all the resources we can and we are not looking into the future and how it will affect the future generations and our planet. I'm really trying, but not too much, to be honest. I'm not sure. I am aware, uh, but in the end, uh, I have other problems in my mind. We are just using something and we don't expect the future of the environment. Our climate is changing. That's not a political statement or personal opinion. It's an empirical fact that's going to affect all of us in the future. The last few years have broken all-time temperature records and are expected to rise even more, which is disastrous to our planet. A large part of this problem can be linked to the harmful greenhouse gases that we emit into the atmosphere. At the same time, people are also polluting our planet with plastic and other harmful materials. Luckily, most of us seem to realize that this is happening, but don't seem to do very much about it. So trying to understand this problem, we, a group of students, met up with some people who are all trying to save the environment in their own ways. Why aren't we changing? And how can we change? That's what we're trying to figure out. I am Marlies Nieuwhuis and I am an applied psychologist slash junior researcher at Hansa University of Applied Sciences. I really do believe that psychology plays a really big part uh, in the issue of climate change. Uh, mostly, I think it's amazing and really good um, that we have all these new kinds of te techniques getting developed and everything, but if we eventually don't have people who want to use it or want to act on it, I don't think the process is going really fast that way. Honestly, I don't think everyone has that great opposition towards it, but I do think that um, not everyone uh, feels the urgency of the whole concept and of the whole situation. Um, for example, there's this uh, well, there's this theory that says that uh, yeah. we, we as people respond more to uh, well, issues that are personal to us, um, that represent abrupt changes in our environment or that, uh, that are immortal um, and most, mostly are all happening right now. <laughs> so uh, if we apply that theory to um, well, a concept like climate change, and we're going to think about that, you'll see that climate change for a lot of people is mostly something that's something in the future. <laughs> it's something there and okay. And um, well, they're not really experiencing the discomfort from the consequences for it in this moment. And also for a lot of people, it's not really something that's affecting their daily lives right now. Um, so I guess the bigger thing is that, well, people don't really feel the, the bigger threatening consequences mm -hmm. that climate change might eventually have. Yeah, we do believe that social aspects are a really big influence uh, on the way people tend to behave sustainable. Um, well, for example, when you have like a neighborhood and the majority of people in this neighborhood have solar panels, um, then the other neighbors who don't have them yet are more likely to also get solar panels as well. Um, or another example when, you, well, maybe you have like this group of people in a working place who are highly motivated to uh, behave sustainable. And then you have this other group of employees, their colleagues, who are not necessarily that motivated to, um, well, behave sustainable, but they just don't join in the actions that they're doing just because they 
want to do something fun or something nice with their colleagues. Also, I think with that is that it's not only more effective, I think, to th do things in a group, um, but it's also just more fun because people then feel like they're doing it alone then. So we don't feel the urgency to change now, but if we get more people to start, it will be easier for all of us. But what steps should we take to change our habits? I'm Cecile Nieuwenhout and I'm a newly elected member of the City Council of Groningen for the party GroenLinks, which is the uh, green left party of the Netherlands. And at the same time, I'm also a researcher at the University of Groningen doing my PhD in the field of energy law. Uh, why is it so important to make little steps? I think, first of all, um, it motivates yourself. So if you do a little step, if you, for example, take the bicycle instead of the car, even if it's just once, it makes you feel good about the environment and about yourself. So that's a psychological effect, and that's very important. Well, there's many tips to be given to people for changing their lifestyle. Uh, for example, be a conscious consumer. So check every time you buy something, if, if it's clothes or food or products, do you, need, do you really need it? And if you need it, uh, where do you get it from? What is the, the production chain towards the product? Uh, it helps a lot if you check this and if you buy something else, if, if the production chain is not good enough. Uh, what helps a lot as well is, um, is uh, changing your way of transportation or traveling. Uh, my, uh, I liked flying a lot, I must say, I can confess. Uh, but I've changed it recently and now I decided to only go for public transport. Uh, so tr trains, buses, uh, whatever brings me to my destination. Um, it takes a lot longer, but it's also a more relaxed way of traveling, so I don't really mind. These small measures can really make a difference. Nowadays, there are more people worried about the situation and being conscious about the things you eat is a big part of it. A vegan cafe is a good place to learn more about it. Uh, I'm Tim Boskus, I'm an uh, animal rights activist and I've been vegan for two years now and uh, I'm also an environmental uh, activist. I study uh, at the Hans University of Applied Sciences and in my part time I do all kinds of activism on different topics. Well, I've decided to, I've always been interested in uh, trying to have uh, the, the smallest environmental impact as possible. Uh, so that means I've always been conscious about uh, single use plastic and trying to reuse it, not put the heating on that high. Uh, but uh, I've only tried changing my habits since three years ago when I went vegetarian. And uh, that was very, uh, well, kind of just because I saw how easy it was. I had a girlfriend at the time that was veg uh, vegetarian and she went vegan so I decided to go vegetarian because it has a massive impact on your carbon emissions and your ecological footprints. And then afterwards I decided to, to I saw how easy veganism was so I decided to also go vegan. I mean it's annoying sometimes where you feel like oh uh, I would really like a coffee now but you can't because you left your cup at home and you don't want to use any, any of the cups that they have available. Uh, because that's single use and you have to throw it out afterwards. But on the topic of uh, eating, no, I don't miss anything. Well, just start. As long as you're starting to do something, even if it's this small, it will make a difference. And I feel like a lot of people are not really aware of how much of a difference it can make. Because, of course, when you switch then your lights or well replace them with better lights like led lights or whatever um, that's only a small thing you might see back in your whole energy bill or anything but if everyone does it or if only your whole neighborhood does it it makes quite a difference so basically start with the small things in in your households and at your work so start with changing those light bulbs and <laughs> start with um well, reducing your waste or maybe eat a little, little bit less meat every week. Um, just start with the, the, the small steps that you're, comfort, like, that you're comfortable with, with and, um, well, upgrade from there. Um, I'd like to show you a couple of our uh, interventions. Uh, one of our promotional 
um, living rooms. Oh, this one, we used to promote a campaign in which people get uh, small energy management uh, plugs, which they can plug between their um, devices or any machine they have in their households. And then they can see how much the machine uses for energy, but also how much it costs them. So that gives them a lot of more insight in how they well, use energy at home. Other interventions that we have, and this is a pretty big one, it's already played by hundreds of people, uh, is the We Energy game that was developed as a side project for one of my colleagues, uh, well, PhDs. And basically what they do, they play this with government organizations um, and with companies and everything. And what they do, it's like a board game in which you have to make a city energy neutral and it brings people a lot of awareness on how complicated the uh, energy transition actually is but also how they can take action. Um, and then at last I'd like to show you another intervention. This is a thermographic camera that I just turned on so it has to uh, start up a bit. Um, and with this camera, this is one of our other campaigns, uh, people get the opportunity to uh, make a thermographic scan of their own homes. Uh, and so they can see how their home is doing on insulation, for example, and where their heat is leaking out of their house. Or not, hopefully. So basically we do a lot of different uh, kind of projects. A lot of them are uh, focused on awareness um, and on helping people to take action. And that's what we do here. So take action, because little steps can lead to big changes. And with this in mind, you can make a difference. But are we as consumers even responsible to make this difference? Um, which groups are uh, responsible for pollution? Um, I think mostly um, the consumers and the big companies are the source of the pollution, uh, but I don't know whether they are really responsible for it uh, only, because I also think the government has a large role to play. Uh, so the government sets the frame um, within which consumers and organizations act. So if the government doesn't set the frame right, uh, then it's difficult for consumers to act right. For example, if um, the consumption of meat is a lot cheaper than the consumption of uh, alternatives that are better for the environment, um, then consumers well, have a very hard time choosing for the less polluting option. But basically the prices are not set in the right way because the government is there to also uh, well, take care of the long-term um, well, risks that there are. And the government is also the one who can change the pricing, for example, through taxation. Uh, they are also the ones who can give permits for certain things like uh, large uh, industry or uh, polluting uh, farms or um, big roads, for example. Uh, so they have a large role in setting the frame uh, within companies and within which companies and the consumers react. Um, how do you see the world in 30 years? I hope it's going to be way better. I hope right now that we find a way to have a better world in 30 years, but I don't know if we'll make it to that point. Maybe we can save the world. We can try, but if we don't try all together, it will be impossible. Let's look around us. We are not the only one on this planet. A planet that has coexisted with us since the beginning of history. Let's look around us and realize that not everything is about us. We believe that we are building a better world, but what we are actually doing is destroying our surroundings. The ways of saving the planet are already in front of us. It just needs one thing to make it work. People. It's time to stop making excuses. Even little steps can lead to big changes. We are not in this alone, so stop for a moment and look around.